Hi, I'm Mike from thesubstream.com, and thanks for watching this episode of The Film Lab. And I'm sorry I sound like the guy from the Otrebin commercial, and I'm also sorry that you probably are too young to know what Otrebin commercial I'm talking about, because I just realized I haven't seen that Otrebin commercial in about 12 years. Today we're going to be talking about an absolutely fundamental concept that's important to your development as a filmmaker. It's a really simple piece of shorthand that cinematographers and gaffers use to keep track of lighting setups across different shooting days when they're shooting a movie. It's called a lighting ratio or a contrast ratio and it's one of those things that's kind of hard to understand when it's explained on paper but it's relatively easy to understand if someone demonstrates it for you. Which we are going to do. When you're shooting people, which you're going to be doing more often than not, the lighting ratio or the contrast ratio refers to the difference in the amount of light between the light coming from your key light and your fill light. The higher the ratio, the bigger the difference between key and fill, the more dramatic and noirish it looks. And the lower the difference, if you get the same amount of light from the key and fill, the flatter it's going to look and the more it's going to look like you're shooting a sitcom or shooting me under a bunch of Chinese lanterns. So for this demonstration, we're gonna use our best friend, number one A substream model, Ryo the handsome ass crackage Zakic. Please sit down, Ryo the ass crackage Zakic. Yes, I magically apparated you, now sit down. So we're theoretically gonna be shooting him for an interview, but we don't know what our director wants the shot to look like. We don't know if he wants it to be high drama or relatively plain Jane looking. So what we're gonna do is experiment with a bunch of different lighting ratios so that we can see what those looks look like. We're gonna keep our key light the same in every shot. That's a 500 watt Lowell Omni light, and we're gonna be messing with our fill light. The first thing that we do is kill the house lights, then we strike our key light. Very dramatic, as you can see. There's a big difference between the lit side of his face and the unlit side of his face. There's no fill. Doesn't he look like a Universal Studios monster? Using our trusty light meter, which we learned how to use last week in an episode of the Film Lab, we measure how much light the key is shining on our subject's face. After some fancy calculations, we come to F8. Now we'll set up the fill light on the other side of Ryo's face. It, like our key light, is a 500 watt Lowell Omni light, except this light is diffused. Now we'll measure how much light's being put out by our fill light. For accuracy's sake, we'll turn off the key light so that we can measure just the effect of the fill. And would you look at that, the fill light is giving us a reading of F8 as well. Since we're getting the same amount of light from both the key and the fill, we know that the resulting lighting ratio is 1 to 1. As you can tell, it's pretty flat looking, not much drama in this kind of lighting setup. Let's get some shadows, let's get some drama. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to move our fill light back because we've got plenty of room in our studio. This takes away some of the light from the fill side of Ryo's face. The key light is the same, F8. Now that's a little bit better. We're starting to get some modeling on Ryo's face, some shadows on the fill side, a little bit more drama. Let's measure the ratio. We kill the key light, take our measurement from the fill side, and do 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 do, 5.6. That's one stop different from our previous reading, F8. When you're dealing with f-stops, it's important to remember that the amount of light from one stop to the next is either a doubling or a halving of the amount of light. So a reading of 2.8, for example, is half the amount of light if you had a reading of 4. In our case, our previous reading was F8 from the fill. Now it's 5.6. That's one full stop lower. Meanwhile, our key is the same, F8. That means we have double the amount of light on our key side compared to the fill side, which means that we have a lighting ratio of 2 to 1. When you compare this ratio to our previous ratio of 1 to 1, you can see that the 2 to 1 ratio gives you a little bit more shadow on the fill side of Rao's face. Still not dramatic enough? Well, just diminish the amount of light that's falling on the fill side by another stop. And then you've got a ratio of 4 to 1, a two-stop difference. Or keep taking it down even further, another stop, 
a three stop difference meaning an eight to one ratio. Super dramatic, super duper dramatic. And there you go, a variety of lighting ratios giving you varying amounts of drama that you can inject into your scene. It all depends on what your director's looking for. So other than a little bit of complicated math, which wasn't even really that complicated in practice, this is a relatively simple concept, but it's absolutely invaluable. And when you start using it as shorthand, lighting becomes a lot simpler to do, on, both on the fly and in terms of pre-planning. Just make sure you take good notes and keep track of what you're doing when you're lighting. That always helps. Thanks for watching and come again soon. Say thank you. Can I go home now? Yes.